Hey guys, Sean here. Food prices are soaring and this is going to tear the world apart, not just your wallet. You see the wealth divide between the rich and the poor, it's currently this big, right? And very soon it's going to get wider and wider. We are seeing food prices in Lebanon soar, Egypt forcing farmers to sell their harvest to the government under the threat of law and bloody food protests in Iran that aren't stopping. Now the crisis has been brewing for years now and the war in Ukraine is just turning up the heat. Farmers have either turned into soldiers or they can't export their harvest thanks to the ports being closed off and the country itself is surviving on their food reserves stocked long before the war. Now, the world was relying on India to come to the rescue. After all, they did promise to save the world from hunger. But what happens when the world's second largest producer of wheat has restricted their food exports and is now focusing on their own survival, right? You get soaring wheat prices, a whopping 6% jump on top of prices that are really 60% higher from the start of the year. This means your bread, cakes and spaghetti are going to rise in price yet again. Now, these food hikes aren't going to stop soon and this is going to tear the wealth divide even further. When food prices soar, the majority of people have no choice but to funnel their money to the grocery cart and this shift in consumer behavior is adding more straws to the back of an economy that's ready to collapse. And in this video, we are going to discuss how bad this situation can get, how you can start preparing and how to position yourself for this wealth transfer. When it comes to the bare essentials of human existence, we absolutely need three things, right? Breathable air, clean water and ample food. You take them away and you have a world on a tinder box ready to explode. Now, a food shortage was one of the primary reasons the Arab Spring broke out and why violent protests have been happening in Sri Lanka. Now, Egypt alone has seen food prices soar by 30% and their inflation rate is astounding 13%. And this isn't an isolated case, just confined to the Middle East. Now, I challenge you to compare food prices today with six months ago and you kind of begin to realize the full magnitude of this food crisis that we are facing, right? Yes, India curbing food exports is bad, Russia's falling wheat exports are making things worse, but those are just extra nails in the coffin, right? What do farmers need to grow food? I think you kind of guessed it, fertilizers. And when you see their prices jump anywhere from 150 to 200% within a year, this just screams a food shortage that is about to explode. And guess again what is needed to create it, right? natural gas and we all know what is going on with energy prices today now because of this premature shift towards green renewable energy solar power a lot of nuclear power plants were decommissioned causing major dependence on russian gas to keep the lights on with russia's constant threat of withholding natural gas from europe and countries like germany you know just spending more money on alternative means like lng they've just signed a deal with qatar this is just going to skyrocket energy prices even further right so it's like having to choose between generating electricity and heat or manufacturing fertilizers to grow more food right it's really the devil's deal and that's why we are seeing food prices just skyrocket to the atmosphere and it's not just one simple event like india banning weak exports or ukraine causing supply chain issues right this whole situation has been really baking for years and now we are seeing the monstrous effects every time we go to buy bread and eggs. So food prices are going to continue rising across the board. That much is certain, right? If you're paying $3 for a loaf of bread today, it could be $4 by the end of the year and you have no choice but to pay. But how bad it can get will really depend on each individual country. And you need to check two things, right? Your country's food production and the food reserves or stockpiles they have. Now, if you don't, then you're opening yourself up to massive pain if this food crisis escalates further, right? Now, firstly, do you live in a country that's a major food producer or exporter? Because that's going to be your first layer of defense, right? Countries like the United States, India, China, and Brazil, they all have the ability to just sell their food domestically and ban exports if they want. Like what India is actually doing right now to feed the local population. When things get really bad, it's going to be every country for themselves and we can expect more food export restrictions if the situation escalates. Now, that doesn't mean that food prices won't increase. It's just that increase won't be as bad and there's less likelihood of shortages, right? You know, you'll still have food on the grocery shelves. You'll just be paying 5, 10, 20% more 
and no one can escape the price increases right even if you farm your own food right even if you have your own plot of land you have your own home garden you're still going to pay more for fertilizers right the price of food will continue to go up and the real pain happens when you're in a country like japan or egypt that imports their food globally the price increase will be even more right now we got to understand that most of global trade today including food is done in us dollars right and right now the dollar is at an all-time high and that means food in your local currency will just skyrocket even further now the second layer of defense is how much food reserves your country has now no one knows for sure how much food each country has stockpiled those are national secrets and it's going to be near impossible to dig out the true numbers like in singapore the closest figures we have reveals more than three months of supplies back in 2020 while other countries like china have food stockpiles for over 18 months right that's one and a half years allowing them to survive even longer and this just shows us the big drawback of globalization right it removes the incentive of really being self-sufficient to be specialized at what we do for example japan can just focus on manufacturing high-tech and quality products while they import food and energy from other countries but we can kind of see this model breaking down especially when survival is on the line now countries are increasingly moving towards protectionism and it makes total sense right your votes and power comes from the local people and as a government if you can't satisfy them especially when it comes to food you're risking unrest breaking out on the streets so things are going to get worse folks and this just brings us to the heart of the topic the poor and the middle class are going to get decimated because of higher food prices and this is why you must be aware and start to prepare while there's still time. Now, I'm not celebrating the wealth gap getting wider, but there's no point in staying stagnant. We are either moving towards being more self-sufficient or sliding downwards, right? There's no matter where you are in the world, food is the number one priority and people will have to get that settled, right? Now, this food shortage is going to drain people's money away from everything else into the essentials. Now, the average American and most people in developed countries spend around 13, 14 or maybe 15% on food. And we can see that only 15% as well goes into savings and investments. Now, just imagine if food prices doubles in a few years, suddenly you're going to be spending 20 or even 25% of your income to fight starvation. Obviously, if you're in developing countries like the Philippines or Pakistan, then food can even go up to 40% or more and that makes the situation even more precarious for you, right? And this message should really be a big red warning flag for you to prepare fast. So if food prices just keep skyrocketing, just think of the chaos this will cause in the entire market, right? Now on one hand, interest rates are going up and people are afraid of the stock market imploding. And on the other hand, you have the Fed about to remove liquidity suck money out of the system come june now this means asset prices are going down but the majority of people won't have the opportunity to buy them because they just have to spend money on food because if they don't eat they will starve and this is how bad the situation is becoming and why the wealth gap in these few years is just going to widen more than ever we can see that the top 20 percent of households save and invest like over 25 percent of their income but that's just showing a partial picture Here's the tricky part, guys. If you are making $4,000 a month and $3,000 goes into your bills and food, you are left with $1,000, right? You know, for your ex other expenditure, for you to invest in. But if you're making $8,000 a month and you have the same standard of living of $3,000, now you're left with five grand. That is five times more purchasing power to scoop up assets at a discount. So the rich are gonna get richer in terms of magnitudes right now on the whole this food crisis will mean there will likely be less money flowing to the stock market and every single investment type even precious metals as well and that's why it's going to contribute more downside pressure on asset prices at least on the short term and because the majority of people have to choose between starving or buying gold or the s p the answer is going to be very obvious right you will choose food 100 percent of the time but on the converse, this is an opportunity for those who are prepared to really buy assets at a discount as prices continually fall, right? Money is going to be drained from people's pockets into food, which means overall, there will be less competition and the wealth transfer will be bigger. 
Now, this is the state of the world that we are living in and it's up to you and me to get prepared. If not to build wealth, then at least to survive. Because honestly, no one is out there looking out for us, right? This community here is great. I love this channel. But out there on the streets, it's getting crazier every day. You need to have a plan to be buying assets. You need to be stacking cash and then deploying it somewhere, right? You need to make your money work for you. So how do we get ahead in this coming food crisis? Now I have three things we can all start working towards and it is in progression to help us all become more resilient and if you can do all three, you'll be in the best position to survive and pull out ahead once the dust clears. Firstly, you need to get fit and healthy as much as you can. Now there are no two ways about it. If you aren't in your best shape yet, it's important to drag yourself to the gym or hit the bricks and start jogging, right? The healthier you get, the less money you will spend on those nasty foods that just drag you and your mood and your productivity down. The leaner you are, the fewer calories you will crave and by that extension, you will save on your food costs. Because everything from vegetables to beef and chicken, they are all going up guys. You cannot hide from either and you still need a balanced diet. Next, start stockpiling food to get the best return on your money. There are very few guarantees in life but the closest we can get today is to buy food in batches because very soon that carton of eggs will jump up in price. And that's why you need to be buying things in batches, right? Buy a month's worth of food at least and focus on the things that are going to be going up in price the most. You know, your pasta, your rice, things that you can store for a long time, even toilet paper and toothpaste as well. Now, if this food crisis gets worse, prices are going to hike once again and you're going to be eating those stuff anyway, right? So buy in bulk. We have reduced your calorie intake and you're buying in bulk right now and spending more today to save even more tomorrow. Now, the final step. You must have a plan to start buying up assets when you can because sooner or later, this food crisis will subside. Now, everything good or bad eventually ends and we won't be in a perpetual state of despair forever. If we take a look at the historical wheat prices, eventually they will come down and maybe settle at the $4 to $6 level. So this period to accumulate assets for cheap might be actually quite short-lived. For myself, I'm buying more shares of the S&P and VT which basically represents the world economy as well as gold and silver to a smaller extent. Now, if you feel food prices are going to continue to skyrocket, you can take a bet with agricultural ETFs like the Wheat Fund or the Invesco Fund but be warned that their expense ratios or their management fees are rather high at 1% or more. You can also consider food companies like General Mills or Tyson Foods which have pricing power and will benefit if food prices continue to soar. For me, I just keep things simple, right? Hard assets like gold and silver and index funds that gives me broad exposure to the whole economy and I'm good. This food crisis isn't just going to threaten how we spend our money. It's actually one of the key drivers of the wealth gap and we need to be prepared. When food prices rise, they tend to stay a long time even if the shortages are solved because inflation is still sky high, right? And if you're dining out, notice how food prices never ever seem to come down. Now, the only ones that do from time to time are KFC and McDonald's, which have the ability to lower prices to sell more volume, right? But those aren't the type of food you want to be eating anyway. Now that you know the stakes, it is important to do what you can to firstly secure your food supplies for your family and then with whatever cash you have left, have a plan to start buying assets as their prices continue to drop, right? Because eventually, the economy will recover things will get better and if you're positioned well, your wealth will grow. So how are food prices in your city or region? Is there a mad scramble to stop power supplies or are people still oblivious to what's coming ahead? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the like button, subscribe and I'll see you soon.